Hello there, my friend, it's Fitzula here. This year I'm starting with those um, Ask the Coach or Agile Q&A sessions. And the reason I'm doing that is because I have asked you in the newsletter, yes, I do have a newsletter, look in the description down below, but you can just see the link here. And in the newsletter, I asked people to ask me questions and I sometimes answer them directly via email or then I, I think about and I create a blog post and you know, those are more longer form content. And I was wondering, why not trying to do a little bit of a Q&A as if you were having a chat with me? So I'm gonna start also being a little bit quicker, I feel like answering all these questions. So today we're gonna go with one that a lot of people actually have asked before. But I will say it as Andrew uh, as asked me because that's really interesting. He was short and tweet and to the point. Andrew said, in Agile, should we use story points? And you know, I just, I, I love the straightforwardness of it. And I was just thinking, how do I want to answer to that? I even have a video somewhere in here in the content. It's about planning poker. And I used a lot of story points and planning poker. And I was trying to not get biased. And my answer will be no, no, Andrew and all the other folks who asked similar questions. You don't have to use story points. It is actually a rather interesting way of estimating work. Because let's get real, work needs to be estimated. You're not gonna get a contractor come to your house and let's say redo your bathroom and he says, it's gonna be done when it's gonna be done, right? You wanna know how much it costs. You wanna know how long it will take. So we need to estimate in some shape or form. And story point was just a way to carry what we call the relative estimation, which means let's just see the size of things in relation to each other and try to chunk down work in a way that makes sense for us. So in fact, here's how I would put it, why I don't feel like you should be using story points in general, based on my experience on companies and teams out there using adopting agile. So first they do not discuss. They do not discuss the, the story points and we're going to go to each of them. The second point is that they have those points there, three, five, eight, everybody loves the Fibonacci sequence, but nobody does anything with those story points in planning. And three, they are not doing also anything or breaking down bigger stories when they notice like, wow, this is, this is big, this is massive what we do. So if we look briefly into each, the first one is not discussing the points. And when people use something like Fibonacci and it means you go, you know, I say, I'll give it a two and a colleague says it's a three. A lot of times I see people, okay, let's go with the three or okay, let's go with the two and not really looking into the fact that I'm sorry, the difference between two and three is a 50% increase in the case of the two or in the case of the three is like, you know, there's a, there's a third of that number in there. So it is a significant difference. So it's basically saying, you know, are you doing my job in two weeks or three weeks? If I'm traveling in three weeks, I want it to be done earlier. So you get the point. There is a difference and it needs to be discussed. So the point is irrelevant. The discussion is everything. Then for the second thing, the, uh, the, you know, not using those points in planning, I see a lot of people really, you know, they, everything now has a point. They did planning poker and now everything is a two, is a three, is a five. And every sprint or however they organize their work, they don't consider capacity. How many of those points can really be absorbed? They just keep putting, if you look from one sprint to another or one period of time in case they don't, they don't run on iterations, you know, every, every week or every month, they just, they are all over the place. This time we have 50 points. Next time we have 12. We don't plan in accordance to that. So why are you giving estimates? The whole point of estimating is to know, does that fit the calendar? And that's why you don't need the points. Even if you're a, a responsible team, you can go with gut feeling and you can go with ideal days and says, looking at our calendar and maybe we plan every month, every week, what can we accommodate in that month or in that week. The whole point of gathering any sort of estimation is being able to kind of predict and accommodate work in that way. So doing all those story point sessions where people are doing poker planning and 
in the end you come up with uh, you know, not being able to accommodate work into your schedule based on whatever you estimated is just a waste of time. And then the third point that I mentioned was not breaking down the stories into something smaller. And that usually means that sometimes when someone either disagrees and thinks like, oh, this is really too, too big, the other, the rest of the team says things like, uh, oh, you know, why did they disagree? And they decide to just soldier through. And then obviously that thing will not fit the schedule ahead that they have. But I also see sometimes they say, well, this is a 13. And if you're used to uh, the Fibonacci sequence, you're gonna know, well, that kind of looks big. Let's break it down. And that moment for breaking down is, sometime in the future. It kind of feels like, well, the work is too big, let's stop discussing right now. But actually, maybe you could attack a piece of that work right now. So let's talk right now. What could make it a three? What could make it a two? Whatever your team uses as a sign of smaller work that can be accommodated in the sprint. So instead of like using this the moment to be a discussion on the work that's coming, how you're gonna plan for it. I see a lot of this mechanistic approach in which we just, you know, let's, let's give points here and there, and later we don't really know very much what to do with them. So to wrap up in a short and sweet manner, do you need the story points for your team to work in Agile? Absolutely not. Estimation has nothing to do with story points. All you really need is one, understand how to do your work a whiteboard, looking into the code, whatever moves your boat, whatever works for you and your team. Two, make sure that whatever work you decide to implement fits your planning. That's how you do any sort of agile, adaptable, flexible estimation and story points may or may not be used. That's really up to you. Just don't go on the mechanistic approaches of just doing the story point, doing planning poker, and not really using those numbers. So it's really a meeting where you're just wasting everybody's time. So that was the video, my friend. I hope that answered your question. If you have any other questions, you can comment down below. If you like the video, give it a like. If you don't like it, give it a dislike. And keep asking questions. I'll be coming up with more Q&As like such. And I hope this is something that you find valuable and that you can use straight away for whatever question that you have. For now, this video ends here and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.